Hi, and welcome to Cooking Time. I'm David Martone, Executive Chef at Classic Time in Westfield. And today's show, we're featuring cheap economical meal based on one simple tomato marinara sauce. We have four dishes to make, all very economical. We're gonna make a macaroni, a pizza, a stuffed zucchini, and something called eggs in purgatory, all based on one marinara sauce. Join us, you're gonna have a whole lot of fun and learn some real good eating. Hello, and welcome to Cooking Time. I'm David Martone, Executive Chef at Classic Time Cooking School here in Westfield. And today, we're uh, celebrating some cheap dishes all based around a simple tomato-based marinara sauce. Um, I'm not brand specific, but um, today we're using Tutoroso tomatoes, and the reason I'm telling you that is they were recently stale. And my dad, who's 80 years old, who has nothing but time on his hands, constantly shops for me and catches all the sales. So while this is normally about $2 for a can, I think he got a bunch of them. When I say a bunch of them, I'm talking about like 17 cases of them. He goes into the supermarket and he'll say, sir, there's a limit of four. He'll put 40 of them in his carriage and he'll go up and he'll say, listen, I'm 80 years old. I've got nothing but time on my hands. You can see me 20 times and I'll annoy you 20 times or you can ring me up all at once. Either way, he always shows up with tons and tons of tomatoes when they're on sale, um, also paper towels, toilet paper. Um, it's really our staples that, that we go through a ton of paper towels, a ton of tomatoes, and olive oil, of course. So we're gonna make this simple marinara sauce, and we're gonna use it for a variety of things. We're gonna chop up some garlic, and I'm simply um, just crushing down the garlic a little bit to flatten it out so it doesn't shoot all over my cutting board when I chop it up. I buy my garlic already chopped and I try and buy garlic out of California. It comes out of Gilroy, California. You have to be careful because uh, garlic that comes out of other parts of the world really gonna have an off taste and we're really watching uh, food that comes out of other parts of the world at this point because there's been a lot of problems with um, contaminations and different quality issues. So the garlic comes in a container. Um, it's marked that it comes from Gilroy, California. If not, just buy some bulbs of garlic, peel them, and then we're just gonna simply chop them up real quick and we're gonna start some um, olive sauteing in, a, in a, um, a wide pan. Get that going now heat our pan up. The wider the pan, the quicker this will actually cook. If you cook it in a sauce pot like this, it'll take a bit longer to cook. So we're looking for a quick cooking time, and that's what it's really all about with marinara sauce. Marinara sauce should cook really just for about 15 minutes. Very fresh sauce. Uh, it's my all-purpose sauce. We probably eat it a couple of times a week. Use it on anything from a dipping sauce to um, macaroni, which you might call pasta to pizza, to just about anything else where you need a quick tomato-based um, uh, sauce. So we've got our olive oil going. Use the back of your knife when you're scraping because that will help to preserve the edge of the knife. When you scrape across the board with the knife edge, what's gonna happen is you're gonna prematurely dullen the blade and you're gonna need to have it sharpened more frequently and more importantly, you're going to have issues with um, perhaps slipping off what you're trying to cut and cutting into something you don't wanna cut. Never ever burn the garlic. If the garlic burns, you've only used pennies worth of garlic and olive oil here. So throw it out and start over. The garlic has to be golden brown or um, soft and tender, kind of translucent. But if it darkens too much, it will make the entire dish bitter. So don't worry about doing it too fast. Let that garlic cook a little bit slower. Um, for one of the dishes that we're gonna do with this marinara sauce, we're going to um, need a piece of toasted bread. So I'm slicing up little piece of bread on the bias. I have some olive oil and a little brush. I just want to brush this bread lightly with some oil. We also do this same type of bread, brush it with oil when we're making paninis, which I can do in the same pan. I'm going to brush both sides. What I'm going to do is heat up a grill pan here. I'm 
I'm making a double batch today. Normally I use just one can of tomatoes. This is a 35 ounce can. I sometimes use a 28 ounce. Either size will be uh, sufficient enough to, um, to sauce an entire pound of macaroni. See the garlic is getting slightly golden here but I'm being careful not to allow it to color too too much because again the pieces that are cut a bit smaller will burn up faster and if they get very dark brown or black it's going to make the entire dish bitter. I think we're about good. Be careful when you pour this in because it does have a tendency to splash. But if you pour it in quickly it'll give you one quick splash and then um, you'll get that initial burst of sizzle. Putting in my second can here. As you can see these are whole plum tomatoes. I'm going to raise my heat up a bit. I want to get this simmering nicely. Once this starts to simmer a little bit then I can get in there and I can start to break up these tomatoes. Let's see if my grill pan is hot. Get our bread toasted nicely. Now one of the things we're going to do with this tomato sauce is we're going to poach a few different things. We have a number of things we want to do with it. I need to take a zucchini and I, what I want to do is stuff the zucchini. It's a great dish I um, came upon in Italy this summer while eating at a little restaurant which is uh, a kind of a favorite place I have in Rome. Not like I travel to Rome all the time but the last two times I was there um, ate there several times and it was wonderful. So I cut both ends off my zucchini and then I'm going to cut this zucchini into three pieces actually. want to take a peek at my bread. Still toasting nicely. Now you can use either a paring knife or a vegetable peeler. And what I want to do is I want to take out all the seeds. So by using the vegetable peeler it's already rounded. So I can stick this in all the way around. And then do it on the opposite side so that you're cutting all the way through. And eventually I'll be able to dig out all the seeds in the center of the zucchini. With the paring knife you would just go all the way around and then I sometimes use my finger or the back of a wooden spoon to push out the seeds from one end to the other. Then I'll take my vegetable peeler and then I can get right in there and scoop everything out from that zucchini. we have a perfect little vehicle to add our stuffing. I'll just do the other couple. Our sauce is just starting to come to a simmer which means those tomatoes will soften up and it'll make the job. See this how it just pushes right out? And again I have this nice little hollow zucchini. Okay, move this around a little bit. I'm already starting to get those wonderful aromas of the garlic and the tomatoes. A little bit more toasted on that side. I'll cut this last one. This is such a cheap dish. If you combine the fact that you buy these tomatoes on sale, even not getting them on sale, think about two dollars for a can of tomatoes and then a couple of cloves of garlic, a few little sprigs of basil and a pound of macaroni which is about another dollar forty-nine. You've got a very very cheap yet fresh meal that you'll be serving to your family. Okay, our third zucchini. Let's turn our bread over. Nicely toasted. Now that our marinara sauce is simmering nicely, 
instead of taking the time to cut all of these tomatoes up, sometimes I take them out of the can, just pick them up, and break them up with my hands. Today, I'm going to use the trick that I've taught my wife, and that's a potato masher. That's why I was saying let it simmer a little bit to get them softened a little bit. I sim and you have to be careful because sometimes it does squirt a little bit. I simply take the potato masher and I go around and crush all the tomatoes. Do it slow because sometimes they're a little bit firm and they will release their juice. That's why again you want to let it get a little bit soft and we're just simply crushing it down so we have a nice coarse texture. We don't want this really smooth like a smooth tomato gravy that you might make that we sometimes call a Sunday gravy. Take your time, not too much pressure needed, but you're going to just crush all these tomatoes and you'll see it'll have a nice coarse texture that when you serve this on um, some nice macaroni, you'll have big hunks of tomato. So I think we're about good with this. Of course, if you like it finer, either break them up by hand beforehand or just continue to go around and crush them up. One piece off of there. Give it a nice little stir. Okay, now we have to add one more thing to this. We need some nice fresh basil. When we're working with basil, we like to take the basil leaves and we like to pop one on top of another, make a nice little stack of them, and then we're going to just simply roll them up. Basil's a pretty delicate herb, so when you um, chop basil, it tends to blacken a bit. So we roll it up and then we take a knife and we gently slice through it like this. See how the tip stays on the board and it's this rocking and sliding motion. Now watch, with the basil I'm slicing through it, I'm not chopping it, slicing. So what's happening is it's letting go these very fine little shreds which is called chiffonade. Now if you don't want it in such long pieces, after I chiffonade that, I'll simply go across the other way and I'll make a couple of slices to take those shreds and make them a bit smaller. Now I've got some nice little fluffy short threads of basil that I can sprinkle into my tomato marinara sauce. Okay, we're going to give that a little shot of fresh pepper. I'm going to hold back from putting any salt yet because this is going to reduce down. Check our bread. Perfect. I've shut our pan off so our bread can sit right there. And now I've got a little bit of fresh breadcrumbs here that I'm going to with some fresh grated cheese. A little pinch of salt. Some pepper. And now I'm going to take a clove of garlic and I'm simply going to, with the tip of my knife, start to scrape away and make some little garlic paste. And then I can just mash that paste up. I'm going to add that right into my stuffing. Got a little bit of fresh parsley here. Just kind of rolling that up into a little pile and then what I want to do is just coarsely chop that parsley to add it to my stuffing. Get that big stem out. If you notice, you're never hearing this. When they do that on television, they're making the knife dull and every time they film another one of those cooking shows with the big networks, they get a brand new set of knives. We can't afford a brand new set of knives and it'll be a sin to waste them anyway, so we're just being careful, which is what you should do. I'll lower down my marinara sauce, give it another stir. It's smelling wonderful, it's smelling wonderful. It's really, um, really just about ready to put on some macaroni if you wanted to do that right now. Now in this, 
to moisten it, I need to add a little bit of olive oil. And I want to just moisten this stuffing mixture enough that it holds together when you squeeze it with your hands. So I first mix it up with a fork. Then I'll get in there with my hands and give it a little squeeze so I can feel if it's in fact going to grab a little bit with your hand, give it a squeeze, and it stays together. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So it's all moistened. Take my zucchini now and I'm going to stuff it. And as soon as each round is stuffed, I'm going to plop them down right into my marinara sauce. Sitting in this little restaurant, didn't even have a sign, it's on a little back street in Rome and we're looking at the menu and I'm remembering things I ate last time and wondering what else I can order and all of a sudden I see this come out and that was it. I knew this was the one I had to have. And this was like, a, um, like an intermediary course. We ordered a first course, then I ordered this, then I ordered some asobuco, and I think we ordered something else, and then it was time for dessert. And since I'm not a big sweet eater, all, and I don't really speak Italian, so all I could think of that I wanted was a peach. So I saw these wonderful peaches, and um, fortunately I knew how to say that in Italian, so when they came and asked us what we wanted for dessert, I said, un pesca, un pesca. And when I bit into that peach and the juice ran down my neck, I knew I had the best peach. Let me just rinse my hands. Quick little clean up here. Start my own little garbage pile on the end. Okay, the next thing to do before I cover this is to add a couple of eggs. This is a dish known as eggs in purgatory. So what we're going to do, we're going to make nice little depression of the heavy tomato sauce. I'm pushing away the heavy pieces so that the egg will fall into a nice little liquid pocket. And I'm going to just break the egg and put that gently into the tomato sauce. Cold eggs in purgatory because we're going to put a little bit of crushed hot pepper with it. Now you can understand the purgatory term. A little bit of my crushed hot pepper to spice this up a little bit right where the eggs are. And now to finish it off, a little bit of mozzarella cheese. That's where the term pizza eggs comes from. There's three little bundles here, gently poaching in this marinara sauce. And to finish it off, a little bit of grated Pecorino Romano cheese. Now I'm sure I've told you this before, but growing up as a kid, I never knew that it was Pecorino Romano cheese. I only knew it as Locatelli, which is actually the brand name. And my mother always said, you know, run down to the store and get me some Locatelli cheese, which was actually the brand name, and we were actually using Pecorino Romano, which is made from sheep's milk. Now, we grew up in Jersey City, so the Locatelli plant was in Jersey City, so I don't know if that was the reason why that was her favorite cheese. Make a quick pizza and a quick pasta. Got some water going in the back for my pasta. My pizza dough all set here. Just quickly going to spread this out. Just a little individual appetizer type pizza. A 
I'll stretch it out a bit. Put it on my pico. Get a little bit of that marinara sauce. And put that right on my piece of pizza. A little bit of cheese. This is just a little rustic pie. Tiny bit of grated cheese. Wipe it off. Let's see if we can get that into the oven. Cook that for a minute. And last, we have a little bit of macaroni. I've got some of these little pasta nests, which is really like an angel hair pasta. So we're going to cook that up. Maybe I'll put three of them in. So let's get a little cleanup going here and we'll get set up to serve all of our items. Always clean up as you go, makes things just a whole lot easier when you're ready to serve. This will be a eggs in purgatory, which I'm going to serve over that nice piece of toasted bread. Make sure my macaroni is going nicely. Pizza's in the oven. This will be for our macaroni and for our zucchini. So let's start to take a look at what we have here. First, we want to start with those nice eggs in purgatory. Perfect. I love when the egg is still runny. We'll clean up our plate a little bit. We'll let our zucchini go another minute. We'll take our macaroni out. Take a look at our pizza. Let's see. A little bit of sauce on our macaroni. And last but not least, our zucchini which actually isn't last. We still have the pizza coming out, which will be one more minute. Let's take a... So here we have a bunch of different dishes made from a simple marinara sauce, which is really economical. Nothing here cost much more than a couple of dollars. We made the simple marinara sauce. We did the eggs in purgatory on a piece of bread, which could be day old grilled. We had one zucchini that we cut up and stuffed. So we have our stuffed zucchini. Of course, a little bit of um, macaroni. You gotta have macaroni whenever you have tomato sauce. And we made a little pizza out of the, um, marinara sauce as well. So four different dishes, economical treats. I'm David Martone, executive chef at Classic Time. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you soon.